Jimmy K here, Metal Voice. Look at this. The Metal Voice shirts are now on sale. Just go to the video description to find out on how you can purchase one. Metal! Welcome to the Metal Voice. Today on the show, wow, big special guest, Iron Maiden guitarist and author, shall we call him author, of the book Monsters of River and Rock, Mr. Adrian Smith. How you doing, Adrian? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. I'm good. So like I said, I'm calling from uh, Canada, and I know there's a little bit of Canada in your book, and I guess, you know, there's a little piece of you and your family from Canada, right, from Quebec. Yeah, my wife uh, grew up in uh, Quebec. She grew up on Nuns Island, oh, uh, right, yes. right on the uh, river there. So, uh, yeah, I, I know it quite well. I spent a lot of time in Montreal. Love it. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, I'm a layman here, so I'm going to be, be gentle with me in regards to fishing, okay? Um, <laughs> first question, as I'm reading your book, and I really did enjoy it, you got a little piece of music there, you got some travel, and you got some fishing. Yeah. For me, it's, what's the difference between an angler and a fisherman, just for the layman out there? Um, well, I suppose, broadly speaking, they're the same thing. I think an angler is into the finer points of it. Um, maybe he does it for, more for sport and puts them back. Um, I think, you know, maybe a fisherman would be uh, more of a, a hunter-gatherer, you know, catching fish and maybe eating them. I, I don't know. If, if there is a difference, maybe that. Um, you know, it's certainly in England, uh, anglers um, f from the from the group I grew up with, the coarse anglers. Um, you know, we put put the fish back. You know, it's for sport. I mean, fish were, were were caught during the Second World War, probably the First World War, and took for the table coarse fish. We call coarse fish anything that's not salmon or trout. You know, like so we're talking pike, perch, mm -hmm. you know, stuff like that, carp. So that's what we fished for. All right, cool. But of course, after the war, people still went fishing and, you know, just did it for for um, pleasure, you know. So, uh, and you had fishing clubs and competitions, they'd weigh the fish and then put them back, you know. So that's, that's the sort of environment I grew up in. Uh, all right, so explain to the common fan then about this book in like 30 seconds or in a minute, you know. What's, what's a, a summary of what are you going to experience when you read this book? Well, um, it's primarily a fishing book, but it's not overly technical. A lot of these stories about, a lot of the fishing is stories and what what happened around the fishing, traveling to and from the fishing. Sometimes the fishing and the music literally cross lines, like when um, Megan were doing the Power Slave album in um, in the Bahamas at Compass Point Studios, I always I always take my fishing rod wherever I go. So I was I had some time off. I was fishing outside the studios in the Caribbean. I cast out and I got tangled up with another line. Mm -hmm. It turned out to be Robert Palmer, you know, from Addicted <laughs> yeah. to Love, that guy, who came running out of his balcony and told me off, you know, the car. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you know, literally stuff like that. You know, the the book's full of stories like that. Later on, Robert Palmer turns up, but he was in the studio this time when I was recording a solo to Power Slave. So this is a whole another story, you know. So all these all these things happen, you know, on my travels. So, you know, when I actually got the book, the physical copy, I um, I was surprised there was so much uh, uh, music content in there. You know, there's I would say, you know, it's it's thirty percent, you know, uh, private stuff about me, personal. And uh, music stories, stories how we wrote certain songs, situations we found ourselves in in the studio, you know, um, and stuff like that, as well as fishing stories and travel, of course. Yeah. Um, so that's it, really. I mean, I've, I've had good feedback from people who actually aren't anglers. But having said that, there are a couple of hardcore, for want of a better word, <laughs> chapters about fishing for the for the hardcore fishermen. Yes, yes. Um, all right. So this is the first thing I was thinking about as I'm going through your book. I'm thinking, I wonder what songs he wrote from Iron Maiden during his fishing trips. Are, do you get inspired, you know, so you're in, you know, the tranquility or you're in the moment of fishing and then you go, you know, I got this idea. Because I, I find it very peaceful, right, when you're fishing. I guess Absolutely. it could be. So what songs... That's the whole idea. Yeah. <laughs> what songs inspired you to write, you know, I don't know, maybe it was uh, Wasted Years, maybe it was... Were there any specific songs that you got inspired by and wrote 
I can't say there was. I honestly can't say because when I'm fishing, as I say in the beginning of the book, you know, it's a Billy Connolly quote: uh, "Fishing is meditation." Yeah. You know. So in other words, you're concentrating so much on the on the fishing, you forget everything else, and that's the idea. That's why it's relaxing. That's why it empties your mind. But it's fishing. It's a meditation with a punchline. So you know, you have the excitement of, you know, occasionally catching a good fish. So I I can't say. Occasionally I'll have a riff and I I I hurry home to to put it down. But I can't think of any any specific song. No, you know I do I do fishing to kind of get away and and clear my mind really from from work. All right. Uh, I was talking to a friend of mine, and I, I guess in your book you talk more of the western part of Canada. But is there have you done fishing in Quebec? You know, sort of the eastern Ontario Quebec side of things. And have you ever caught a? Is it a muskellunge? Is it, how do you pronounce that? Muskellunge. Musky, yeah. I don't. I've muskellunge, yeah. I would love to catch one. They are a mysterious beast. They're very like a pike, but not quite. I've never seen one. That is something I really would like to see. Um, I've done a lot of fishing in the um, Montreal area in the Saint Lawrence around around Nuns Island, actually, for okay. for the smallmouth bass. There, it's very good. Uh, that's an incredible place. Um, I've done a little bit of fishing in Toronto. Last time we played down in Toronto, at the I think it's the Molson Centre is right on the lake there. And I went down for a sound check, and after the sound check, I took my rod and wandered along the bank. But of course there was fans everywhere. But I had a, I had a sort of a, um, a UV mask which I pulled up, mm-hmm. uh, and I just went fishing uh, in among the fans, and they didn't know who I was, you know. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, but my, uh, uh, this, there's a chapter in the book about um, finishing the, the Power Slave tour, which was over 12 months long, and then just chilling out in, in, in um, Western Canada, up in Kamloops. Uh, took a float plane up into the interior there and just chilled out for about a month. I didn't do anything. I just fished. It was great. Yeah. Can I ask you a few maiden questions as I toss them in with the fishing? Is that okay? Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. You talk about Eddie. You know, sort of, at, yeah. you're reluctant at first with Eddie. And then later on, you said, you know what? I think this is a good idea, having this sort of character. So this way we don't have to be in the spotlight, right? Well, exactly, yeah. I could see, I could see the, uh, I could see the, uh, you, you know, the good things about it. But, I mean, at first it was, um, you know, we used to have these monsters coming, running on stage, and banging into you, you know, when you're trying to play. Uh, our manager used to take us around to radio stations in the early days in America mm-hmm. and Canada, and he used to wear like an Eddie mask and go in and start <laughs> growling at everybody. And we like, I'd be like, oh my god, you know. <laughs> but people remembered it, you know. They remember you, no matter what you do. It always comes back to the music. If you can attract as much attention as you like, you know. But if your music's not good, then it's then it's not going to happen. But you know. Luckily, people liked our music too. But Eddie has definitely attracted attention yeah. <laughs> over the years, and that's what you got to have. You know, you got to have something that because we're content to we're just musicians. You know, we like to just get up, play our music, record, and then you know, and then sort of uh, stay out of the spotlight. You know, so Eddie enables us to do that because you know he's on the album covers, and you know people are interested in him. Yeah. So uh, that suits me fine these days. So which album cover would you say is your favorite? Your favorite, you know, drawing of Eddie or a situation of Eddie? Which album cover would you pick? As that is, you know, my favorite cover. Um, I don't know, really. I uh, The graphic ones I'm not too keen on, like Killers and all that. Um, but um, probably something like, uh, you know, Brave New World was cool, you know. Yeah incorporated the imagery but it was a little bit more as we get older we incorporate it a bit more subtly you know i like that a bit more artistically rather than uh, graphic kind of horror of the early days okay all right and here's my fishing question now why is carp oh. so loved by anglers why is it the fish at least that was what i read about the carp you know carp I think I know the answer to that. <laughs> speaking to Amer- Americans uh, and having fished in America and in, in Britain, I, I, I know the difference. The difference is, uh, I know in, in North America they're regarded as as vermin, you know, 
um, by a lot of people. Although there is, um, you have the American Carp Society, and there's a lot of people getting into carp fishing and recognising them for the sort of strong, very game fish they are. But in England, they, when I was a kid, they were they were probably out of all the species, they were the most hard to catch and the rarest. You just didn't. They weren't widespread in those days. Whereas in America and um, certain parts of Canada, they're every, everywhere. They tend to overbreed, and they're not very difficult to catch because there's so many of them. Uh, and also, um, where you get too many fish, they, you, they are stunted, so they don't grow as big, you know, although I know there are some big carp in America. Mm-hmm. So over here, you have very few carp who are very big and very, very hard to catch, and that's how they achieve their... Um, legendary status here um and they haven't in in north america that's that i think that's why All right. um that you know that's that's the only thing i can think of what about your relationship with the clive you know uh, rest in peace clive you know yeah you had that friendship with him he used to come with you on your your fishing trips i guess in the earlier days um you know and then he <clears throat> departs i mean care to comment about it was a tough departing with clive you know uh, him leaving the band and all yeah well Cl- clive and i um used to share a room together um he was a great guy he was uh he was a very funny guy he was um let's say he embraced the rock and roll lifestyle yeah maybe a little too much and that's what you know why he ended up leaving the band because he was a great drummer you know and a great guy but he just you know, it just got a bit much for him, and so we had to make a change. So that was very sad. It was very sad, and I know Bruce has said um, subsequently, and I think he said at the time, you know, I wish we had more time to take time off so he could have sorted himself out, but um, we just didn't have the time then because, you know, we'd finish one tour and then go straight in another one. That's just the way you had to do it then. Tour, 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 yeah. you know. And, you know, the same thing happened with Paul Diano, you know, it's, um, it's tough, you know, and it nearly happened to me, yeah. you know, it, it, it's, uh, can get on top of you, you know, a young guy and you're out there, you got to go out and, you know, perform every night and, um, you know, mentally it's, it can be, can be quite tough because you have a lot of downtime as well to sit around, you know, thinking about stuff on, in your hotel room or, you know, of course you end up drinking too much. Yeah. And then that spirals, and you know, this is what happens. It's 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 a uh, it's a funny old life, you know. It doesn't suit everybody. Yeah, I never saw Paul, but I did see Clive on the Number of the Beast tour in Montreal. And yeah, uh, yeah, he was excellent. You know, it was to me, it hurt me when he left. You know, sort of like a part, like the maiden family is gone. But Nico is a great too, so I won't uh, you know get too much into that. Yeah, um, yeah. You, you were quoted, in, and I guess I'm not sure where, about Eddie Van Halen, like years ago, if you ever was an influence on your guitar playing. And since the sad passing of Eddie Van Halen, do you have any comments about his passing? Very sad, very sad. I mean, probably uh, him and Jimi Hendrix had, uh, certainly in my lifetime, the biggest effect on the electric guitar. Uh, I loved his playing, although... You know, when he came out, you know, I'd already been playing five or six years. So, you know, if I'd have been starting out when I heard him, I would have just copied him, you know, like 99% of the other guitarists yeah. did, you know. Um, but, yeah, he was fantastic. I'd love to have met him. I came close a couple of times, but I never met him. And um, I love his guitar sound. And if, I'm, if I've got a guitar and an amp uh, and I'm just trying to get a sound, I'd probably... Uh, use him as a reference point you know yeah very cool the biggest fish you ever caught and what kind of bait did you use Ooh, um i think it was in um probably in spain and they have um these catfish out there the european catfish called a whale's catfish and they grow to over 200 pounds in weight and i think we had them up to over 100 pounds and um, we were using um, squid as bait, okay. and the things literally, when they when they take off, they just pull. They'll pull you in the lake. They're that strong. Wow. Incredible fish. Thank you so much. Thank you, Adrian, for for the interview. All right. Thanks. Nice talking to you. Nice talking to you too. Say farewell to the future.
Get 